All right, quitting computers. Dear Billy, no fun. And he's having no fun. I work in a trade and I don't have to sit in a cubicle, so the rest of this email may seem too bitchy. Um, well, congratulations that you work in a trade and you have a job. I, I'm, I sitting in front of a computer even for 20 minutes at home. Okay, that was a sentence, everybody. I sitting in front of a computer. That seems like bad like writing for an Asian character like 20 years ago. I sitting in front of a computer even for 20 minutes at home. Um, I don't care about YouTube videos and I don't care about most social media. Okay, I created a Twitter account so I could see what you and Rogan were up to. But I got rid of my laptop and I don't own a computer except for my phone, which is really basic. That's, that's amazing. I can listen to podcasts at work and have email, but I don't use it for fun. I think what you're doing is smart. Everyone told me it'd be hard, but of course that's them projecting. And I'm telling you, it hasn't been bad. I read a little less about sports than I used to. I subscribe to two newspapers. And when I get the urge to be stimulated, I flip through that. Thought maybe on this fine day, I could be the one to inspire you. Love the throwbacks and go fuck yourself. Yeah, if I wasn't in this business, I would do it. You know, but I got to be honest with you. I'm barely uh, been on my computer for that type of shit because of this uh, instrument rating I'm trying to get. So I'm just hitting the books and writing flashcards. And uh, I got to tell you, loving every second. I'm really enjoying it. You know, like I was kind of overwhelmed at first. And I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to fucking... I don't give a fuck how long this takes me. I'm going to get this thing and I'm, and I'm actually going to, I'm not just going to memorize shit. I'm going to understand this shit. And it's been amazing. I actually got a kick out of, uh, Andrew's been sending me some pictures of you guys trying to guess what my little flight, flight simulator looks like at home. I, I, it's totally basic. I got the yoke. I got the throttle. I don't know shit about planes, but I, I had to get the plane controls. And then I got, I got the pedals, which I haven't hooked up yet. And then I just watch it on my computer screen. That's all I have. I don't have the chair and all of that shit. I just bought like a fucking, a, a basic desk that I could clamp all this shit onto. I had it downstairs. Um, but, uh, I don't know. It just, I kind of got to move it out to the garage is basically what it is. You know how it is. You're married. No, this is our house. Could you get your fun stuff out of here? Um, but anyway, but it's been worth it, you know. It's worth it. It's worth. I'm learning this not to fight all the battles, you know. Because my wife tonight, I got to tell you, it's fucking hilarious. Was I was in the kitchen doing the dishes while she was making a steak. <laughs> What has happened to me as a man? I don't drink scotch anymore. I used to be the guy that cooked the steaks. Somehow she just took it over. And you know what? I don't give a fuck. Because I, I was cleaning up because I just made some lentil burgers that I eat during the week. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what's happened. But I think I've been in L.A. too long. But she, was, she made that uh, with some broccoli and some mushroom. It was fucking unbelievable. And then she made these little strawberry shortcakes for everybody. You know what I mean? And I, this is my thing. If the woman I'm with is going to be doing that, I can, I can take my stupid aviation shit out to the fucking garage. That's all it is. Oh, my God. Was that steak delicious? Um, all right. 21-year-old with skeleton in my closet. Oh, jeez. Yeah, yeah. All right, what do we got here? Okay. Um, dear old Billy Red Taint. <laughs> I'm a tw oh, wait a minute. Wait, I forgot to play my theme music. Jesus Christ, how do I forget this? Every single... It's time for advice with your host, Billy Burr, and a personality from somebody else. All right, there we go. Um, all right, I'm a 21-year-old guy uh, with a skeleton in my closet, and it's making me lose sleep now. When I was 15, a freshman in high school, I was sleeping with this 18-year-old senior girl. Woo! Good for you. She kept the fact that she was already in a relationship with someone after we 
fucked a few times. Okay, she didn't let you know. All right, I was ridden with guilt. Why? She wasn't up front, but she told me I wasn't the first person she did this with. She told me her boyfriend doesn't please me like he should and told me that she sometimes talked to him on the phone while she's naked to another guy in bed. Okay, all right, all right. All right, first of all, people are really young in this goddamn story. What, what the fuck kind of red shoe diary is this bullshit? First of all, dude, you are totally exonerated of the guilt. You're 21 years old. It happened when you were 15. Who gives a fuck? She's not still with the guy. Anyway, she convinced me that what she was doing was okay, saying that the relationship wasn't going to last anyways, and my horny fucking teenage brain went along with it. Of course she did, for a year before I told her we had to stop. I never spoke to her or mentioned it to anyone again. Well, uh, well, there you go. Why am I telling you about my shitty high school drama? Oh, no. I looked her up on Facebook. Oh, no. The other week. Oh, no. For shits and giggles. What do you mean for shits and giggles? You were thinking about banging her again. And see that she's now married to that guy and has a baby on the way. I don't know if she came clean to him. None of your business, buddy. Or if she's cheating on him. None of your business, buddy. Or if he knows anything about it at all. None of your business, buddy. When I ask my friends for advice, it's split half and half about whether or not I should contact this guy and tell him. It's none of your business, dude. It's none of your fucking business. There's a baby on the way. That was a long fucking time ago. She might have changed. She might have not. It's none of your fucking business. I'm at a loss here, Bill, and would really appreciate any advice you could give. Do I do anything? Is this just in the past? What do you think? It's in the past. You are both fucking kids. I guess officially she was an adult. All right. She's got some fucking issues. I don't know what happened to her as a kid, but it's not your deal. All right. The fact that you actually give a fuck shows that you're a wonderful, empathetic, caring person who needs to get on with this fucking life. All right. And I'll tell you right now, you are a little weaselly. The fact that you looked her up on Facebook and you not because you looked her up. Okay, you said for shits and giggles. It's not why you looked her up. Okay, we all know why you looked her up. Okay, you would think, hey, you know. Maybe I'll go, you know, swing by the old haunt again. All right. Nothing wrong with that either. All right. It's just the way you presented. You presented it like me and everybody else who listens to this podcast are a bunch of goddamn fools. We know good and goddamn well why you looked her up and it wasn't for shits or giggles. You understand me, private? Um, Is that a donut in your fucking footlocker? All right. Overrated, underrated. Underrated. Shortcuts. Shortcuts make life easier. Everyone uses them. People need to stop kidding themselves with their convictions. Whoa. No, 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 no. Fuck all of that. That all depends on what you're applying it to. If we're talking about using the Waze app, man, I don't mind that. But, you know, I don't think taking shortcuts in life is the way to go it. Because then what you're doing is built on sand and eventually it fucking collapses. I think if you're a sociopath, though, you can live with yourself. People need to stop kidding themselves about with it. I think you're feeling a little fucking uneasy about some decisions that you fucking made. And now you're trying to convince yourself that everybody's wired the way you are. All right. Not saying that I haven't made mistakes in life. All right. Here we go. Underrated. Generation X. Dear Billy the Cunt. I'm 41 and I've been hearing all my life about the baby boomers. This, the baby boomers, that. And now everything in news is about... Any other generation, almost always millennials. What about us? Because we were slackers. We didn't get blamed for anything. We didn't do anything. <laughs> you just had a good time. I don't, I don't feel like, uh, I don't identify Generation X. I identify hair metal, okay? Generation X to me was grunge music that took all my bands away. All right? What about us? Jesus, it's bad enough we've been parented and governed by a generation of materialistic cunts that grew up in the easiest era of American history. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. A lot of them went to fucking Vietnam. Uh, but now media, um, they also dealt with diving under your fucking desk. No, 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 at no time was it ever easy, people. It wasn't. There was always something to worry about. Uh, everybody gets their shit sandwich. Um, the secret is, is putting a smile on your face when you take a bite. Sorry. All right. But now the media, government, television, and social media seems to be geared towards 
either baby boomers or millennials. Yeah, because they're trying to make money off of them. Baby boomers are trying to sell them, you know, last bit of life insurance they can get and fucking health insurance. And millennials, they just blame them for fucking everything. Um, but they're giving away because they're getting older now. So now they've moved on to that generation, uh, what is it, Z? Whatever the fuck is behind them. And has glossed over literally everyone that grew up in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. I don't fucking vote, but I'm about to- <laughs> Well, maybe that's why they glossed over us. I'm about to start voting for people from my generation in the next election, next election, and watch how we end up resolving a lot of the shit these people couldn't fix and millennials don't care about yet. Well, I would advise trying to do that in the private sector. Uh, and then as far as like, nobody talked about us because there wasn't really any wars going on. Um, and there was no social media for all of us to whine and bitch and moan and complain. So millennials, they get a bad rap because they were the first ones that actually had their thoughts heard by the masses because of technology. All right, underrated. Hey, Billy Burgundy Bullocks. Um, underrated for the week. Reversing into a parking space. Why the fuck do people drive straight into a space only to have to reverse out of it completely blind? I don't know about that one. And then also, I don't know. You, well, then wouldn't you be backing into it blindly? Don't you have a reverse camera? Can't you look over your shoulder? I hate those fucking reverse cameras. I'm not good at it. I like the mirrors. Side fucking mirrors. The, the fucking one that's, you know, inside your car is useless now. The way everything's designed. You can't even see out the back fucking windows anymore. But um, I don't know about that. I think it's underrated because it's, it's a great way to get the fuck out of there. But I do think backing into a parking space at your job, I think if your boss starts clocking that, is this guy just, all he wants to do is get money and get the fuck out of here. This guy dealing weed? It might, might put you in a certain situation. All right. Anyways, that's it for the podcast. I got to go put my lovely little angel to bed here. 